Hey there, everybody. Uh, so today I want to do a quick little video on SketchUp drawing. So say you are new to SketchUp and you want to know how to draw something for, say, woodworking. Well, I had this little idea that I got off the internet for a hidden compartment uh, picture frame. So you know, inside of it, you can put whatever you want. Me, I'm going to put my handgun in it. So you can put cash, you can put jewelry, anything you want to do in there. So yet again, this is going to be a little how-to video if you're new to SketchUp because uh, this design is pretty easy. So it, it'll be uh, easy for uh, beginners. So let's get started. So I've already opened up a SketchUp program. I am using uh, SketchUp Make 2017. So let's get started. So uh, first, what I'm going to do is also I'm going to be using a lot of shortcuts with the keyboard. You can use the toolbar up here. You have lots of choices to do anything and everything that you want. So yet again, I'm using shortcuts on the keyboard. I will try to let you know what I am pressing as, as we go. So for me, I'm going to start off making a rectangle. I'm just going to pick the center point of the axis here, and I'm going to draw it out to any any size because what we're going to do from this point is actually punch in the actual dimensions. For mine it came out to be 13 inches and 1 8th. Then you just do a comma and then by 2 and 1 half. Actually you can just do 2.5 a little easier. So at that point, that gives you a big old rectangle down here for the dimensions that we just punched in. So now we want to use the push-pull tool and we're going to actually make a large uh, rectangle block. So all I've done so far is just to pull that up to any size and just you know, let go and then I can punch in how thick I actually want it to be. In mine, it's going to be two and one eighth inches. As you see, that dropped it back down a little bit. So, from this point, this is just going to be one side of a picture frame. So, all I've done so far is drawn out the rectangle to any dimension that you want. Use the push pull tool and pull that up to make an actual block. So now we can start fine-tuning this block to make it however you want to look. So obviously we need to make some 45 degree angles. So over here we're going to grab the protractor. What this is going to do is just going to make some guidelines for you. So I snapped it onto one corner there on the outer edge, snapped it onto this inner uh, whatever you want to call it, call it, lower edge right here. And then as you see, you can draw it out to any angle that you want. Obviously, we want a 45 degree angle so we can make some corners. And then as you see, that leaves a little guideline right there. So what we need to do now is to actually draw a line. And I just hit L to actually draw a line. Snap it on that corner right there. And as you see, it'll let us draw a line out anywhere. I want to bring it out to this edge right here and just press it right there. Now we're going to grab the push pull tool again and as you see it highlights uh, you know a surface plane on either side of this line. So when you press down you can draw it down. So you're basically taking away you know pretend that's a wooden block. I guess you can add to it as well but take away from that that wooden block get it all the way down and click again and it disappears. So we need to do that on the other side. So yet again just hit it on the outer edge right there, draw it out to 45. If you look down on the bottom right hand corner you can actually see the readout and it usually snaps to the major uh, degree segments so 45 is pretty easy. Click again, hit the P for push pull tool, I'm gonna circle around here Oh yeah, we need to draw our line, I'm sorry. So let's draw a line, L for line. And it should snap to those intersections. Now we grab the P for push-pull tool. Bring it on down, and there we go. We have our 45 degree cuts on either end. Now, 
as you see, both sides, you know, if you're looking down the profile of this uh, picture frame, they're straight up and down. Well, let's add a little character to it. So I just don't don't like the straight up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the tape, you know, little tape measure. So T for tape, and just anywhere on this inner edge. I know I want to come out two inches. And by the way, I'm noticing that I have. Um, I don't even remember the terminology for it, but K on your keyboard will allow you to see uh, the lines that are behind your object. So you can see these dotted lines right here. I'm going to hit K and turn that off. So that's what just happened right there. So anyway, I know uh, I want to come out two inches. So you just click. You can hit two, which you see down on the bottom right hand corner. Hit enter. And that line has just now come out two inches from this inner edge and out again. I'm going to grab a L for the line tool. I'm going to come to this intersection right here. And I want to come on down to the bottom corner right there. And I'm going to come back to this one. And I'm going to come all the way up here to this edge right here. I'm going to swing around. And I'm, by the way, I'm doing this, the orbit tool, by just pressing down on the center roll a button on your mouse. Then anyway, I want to hit that intersection right there, bring it down to the bottom corner. All right, so what this is going to allow us to do is grab E for the erase tool. And now we can cut away what we don't want right there. And I can also press down out here, press down, swing across what you don't want, and let go, and it erases everything. Hit the space bar just to get the pointer tool. You can rotate around, take a look at it. So as you see now, looking down the profile, just has an angle to it, a little better profile. Okay, so to continue on, what I'm going to do now is make some channels in it to allow for you know what would be the picture frame surface uh, coming up here soon. Just grab anywhere on the edge come down a quarter of an inch and I want to make another one because it's going to be a quarter inch thick. All right, so now I'm going to grab the line tool again, come to the intersection, go right there, and we're going to do the same thing, just on the intersection right there. Now I'm going to go to the push-pull tool again, and I'm going to go in one quarter inches. Yet again, you can see it down on the bottom right hand corner. All right, so what that's done so far is, yes, it's put in a little channel right there, but I needed to go all the way out uh, to the 45 degree uh, edge. So remember what I was talking about before, that K uh, button, what it does, it allows you to see uh, the lines uh, that would be hidden behind your uh, surface. I'm going to press that again. I'm going to grab the line tool. I'm going to go to this first uh, corner right here, click on there, and as you see, it turns red. That just means it's in the same alignment as uh, the rest of this line right here. It's on that same axis. But you come out here, and it'll snap to the face of that 45-degree edge. So click right there, and it's still connected to that, that uh, edge right there. So now you can bring it on down to this corner. And there you go. And then it lets go. So then you can start uh, and click on this corner. You know, yet again, because if we hit the K button, we can see behind this surface right here. So click on there, bring it on out to the face again. Then we do need to connect it down to there. We need to make another connection right here. So now we can grab the E button for the erase tool. And erase there. We don't need that line right there. We don't need that one and we don't need that one right there. So just hit the space bar to get the pointer tool. Now you see that that's brought it out. So we do need to come and repeat that over here. And again just grabbing the line button coming out until it snaps onto the face. Back to the corner. Snaps to the face. Just making these connections real quick. Okay, I think we got everything. E for erase. 
get it right on that line right there. Don't need that one, that one, and we don't need that one. Okay, so spacebar. So we still have these guidelines sitting there. I can leave them there and just continue on, but just so you know, you can always go up to edit and delete guides, and that will get rid of your guidelines. Okay, so also down here we need to make another channel for the the, the back of the picture frame. So I'm going to come up uh, one quarter inches, go to my line tool again, scroll out just so I can see, come over here, and then we go to the push-pull tool again, go in one quarter inches, Space bar, and then kind of repeat what we did before. Go grab the line tool, come out until it snaps on the face, bring it on back, and we need to go straight down as well. And it should snap on the vertical. See how it's blue this time? That's the vertical axis. And then let's see. Yeah, we should be able to erase. Oh no, we need one more. Need to make connection right there, and then we can erase. go. Oh, we don't need that one either. Hit the line tool, go to the other side. Just repeating everything we've done before. If it stays connected, I actually didn't make that connection, so there we go. Okay. Just erasing what we don't need. Okay. So now we pretty much have one side of our picture frame. Now I do know that, let's see, I'm gonna have some magnets in here. I'm not gonna draw those in just yet. I will, I'll draw those in uh, later on. I'll show you why. So I'm gonna delete my guides. Now we need to make this a, I believe it's called a, a group. So what I did is I just grabbed out here in the open area and I'm just making a box around everything in here. Because right now it's not a group, which just means if we selected say on just this one face and I wanted to rotate everything, it's not gonna do it. It's gonna make a weird shape. So we need to make this one whole object, or, or SketchUp calls it a group. So make a group. So now it's connected everything as one. You can turn off that K button if you like. So now we can start rotating, uh, making copies and rotating these around to make a square picture frame. So I'm going to grab the Q. This is just a, a rotate. Let's see. Um, I'll do it off of this edge right here. And as you see, if you move it around just a little bit, it'll snap to all the faces. Just grab a snap to the one you want. I'm going to be doing the, the horizontal face, if you want to call it that. You click on a corner right there. You come on out to as far as you want. Click there. Now, since we're going to be making a copy, I'm going to hit the control button. And then as you see, you can swing it on out. And we want to go to 90 degrees. And then press your mouse button again. Obviously, they're not in alignment, so I'm going to go to the Move tool, which is M. And we know that we want these two corners to match up. So I'm going to click on that. And you can move it around anywhere you want. And you can also move it, and it'll snap to that uh, axis right there. You see how it's turning green? Just move it on over, and it'll also snap to the other corner as well. So there we go. Now we have two edges on our picture frame. And then just repeat again. So then you can just take your uh, pointer button, highlight one of those, Q for rotate again, get it to snap on the surface that you want, click, control, Rotate it around, snap to 90 degrees, in for move, slide it over, snap to there, and repeat. There's probably other ways of doing this. This is just the way that I do it. 
Ooh, snap. Him. Okay. So now we have all four sides of our picture frame. So now what we need to do is make the back. So I'm going to go grab the rectangle tool again. So just press R. And then you can come down to a corner right here. Make sure it snaps on the corner. So now as you see, you draw that out. And I'm just rotating my mouse wheel to zoom out. Maybe zoom back in. Get it to where you can see the far corner of where you want it to be. And snap on that corner. So that's created a rectangle plane. So we need the push-pull tool to bring that up to match the back surface of the picture frame. So I've clicked down on my left-hand mouse button. And you know I can bring that up any size that I want. So several ways of doing this. I can just bring it up, let go, type in quarter inch. It'll snap it down to a quarter inch. So you can do it that way. Or if you just bring your mouse off to the edge, you see how it's snapping to that edge right there? I'll try and zoom down. So yet again, it's at zero. Bring it up. Just bring it over to the edge that you want and let go. Now that has created that flat quarter inch surface right there. So I'm going to hit the space bar. I need to either double click or triple click. I think it's triple click. That'll select every surface on this rectangle. And we need to make that a group as well. All right. So now what we can do is get around to the front. And we could just make a copy of that because they're the exact same size. So just select that back uh, square, whatever you want to call it. You know it's highlighted because all the edges are in blue. And I think the easiest way to do it, even though you can't see the edges, well, maybe if we highlight, you know that they are extending all the way out to these dotted lines right here. But what we're going to do so we're just going to grab the uh, move tool. We're going to highlight this corner right here. Just press your left mouse button. Hit the control uh, button. That will make a copy. And then you can slide that on down to this edge right here. So there we go. So now we have our picture frame with a hidden compartment inside. This will be a little more clear here in a little bit. I'm going to hit the K button to get rid of all those hidden lines. So now what I want to do is make two sections of this because, well, here, I'll just do it. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Do the, the mouse button. I'm going to highlight this one. And all at the same time, I'm going to hit the control because that's going to grab as many objects as you want, which in turn will make them all into one group. So hit that one, then hit this one, and then I want to go underneath and grab that back uh, surface right there. Hit the right mouse button on there and make all of those one group. Now that left this, uh, we'll just call it the left edge by itself, and then the top surface right here by itself. So you click off of there, then we want to grab this one, control button, this surface right here and make those a group. Now what you can do, just rotating around, is I can just grab the M for the move tool. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Just click down on your left mouse button and see you can slide it out. So just pretend your, your hand was grabbing that edge and sliding it out of that channel to reveal the hidden compartment inside. So that area right there. In this particular design, let's see what kind of space you have. So from here to that bottom edge, you have an inch and three eighths. Uh, I did measure my pistol, which is a Springfield XD45, and that'll leave about an eighth inch clearance. So it is pretty tight, but yet again, you can design it to any dimensions that you want. This is just what I came up with. 
Now, you remember those magnets I was speaking of? Because the way I figure it, when you're sliding this in and out, there's probably going to be some slight, ever so slight gaps in here, which may let this kind of wiggle uh, when it's closed. And obviously, you don't want that. You want the joints to remain as tight as possible. So I came up with the idea of just putting some magnets in here. So we need to modify this group. And the way to do that is what I need to do first is triple click twice to get just this uh, group right here in the modify uh, position. And then I'm going to come down and make some guidelines. I'm going to come from the top edge down. Uh, I think it was an inch and one sixteenth, which was half of the height. And then come in from this edge, an inch and five eighths, which it just happened to snap to right there. And then we can just rotate a little bit. So I'm going to make a little circle, C for circle. Click on that intersection right there, and then bring it out to any size that you want. I'm just going to say I found a magnet that is uh, a quarter inch in diameter. So you bring it out to one eighth, and that'll make your hole a quarter inch. And then we're going to use the push pull tool, and I'm going to make, make a little hole in there. I'm just going to go in about a quarter of an inch. Let it go right there, and there you go. You have a little, little hole right there that you can insert a magnet. You probably have to epoxy that magnet in there. So while it's still in the modify, you can come around and repeat. So come down an inch and sixteenths. Oh, didn't want to work that time, so I'm just going to make sure. There we go. Triple click on it again. An inch and one sixteenths. Uh, the computer has realized that I've done that before, so a lot of times it'll snap to something that you've previously done. Why is this not working? Let's try it again. We need that line. There we go. Need that guideline. And then come out an inch and five eighths. So one and five eighths. Do your circle. C for circle. Come out an eighth of an eighth of an inch for a quarter inch hole. P for push pull. Push that in quarter of an inch. There you go. So now you have modified this group with a, a hole to accept a magnet in there. To get out of it, you just click outside of the box here a couple times, and there you go. So now those two things are modified. However, we still need to modify these because you need a receiving magnet, two magnets to stick together. So I'm just going to keep clicking till you get into the modify there. down, inch and sixteenths, one and five eighths, C for circle, P for push pull, quarter of an inch, there we go, come over to this one, triple click to get it to modify. C for circle, P for push-pull, and there you go. Click outside a couple times to release everything. I'm going to get rid of all these guidelines, clean everything up. Okay, so from this point, basically everything is uh, complete. If you want, you can add some uh, color to everything. Uh, let's just pick this wood veneer. There we go. However, that kind of makes everything the same color. So what you have to do is what's called explode. So say I want this uh, surface right here to be a different color than this one. 
select uh, this group right here, right click, hit explode. That's basically separated these two right here. So this one, oh, I don't know. Let's just say this color right here. Yeah, I don't like that. Let's try that right there. No, nope, don't like that one either. Well, that's okay. We'll go back with this one just to show you all how to do everything. And then same thing with this one. I want that back surface to be different. So explode everything. Select that one. Which one was it? This one. And there you go. Now to get those back into the same group again, remember just with the selector tool, select that one, control button, select that one, right click, make group. And I'll slide this out just a little bit, show you another way to do that. Selector tool, and what you can also do is just select everything, right click, make group. So that is basically done. And then on this surface, you can put whatever you want, attach a picture to it. I had the idea of uh, just putting, say, for example, the first initial of my last name. Uh, so we can do an E. You see what the height is. So we've got an eighth and five eighths, five eighths inches. Let's just make something eight inches. And we'll just do E. You can do any font that you want. Looks like we're going to have to rotate it around. No big deal. Q for rotate. Pick anywhere, rotate it 90 degrees, M for move, zoom down on it. I'm not going to try to make this perfect. You'll get the general idea. And then we need to make all of that in one group so we can move it all around. Make it a group. And then just click on an edge, slide it over. It should snap. And there we go. I know that E isn't perfect, but you get the general idea. Yet again, you can add picture or anything else that you want to it. So there you go. So that would be how you would draw something in SketchUp for any of your woodworking designs. Hope this helped out. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Any other suggestions, let me know that as well. Hope you all enjoyed. We appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you.